You know, there's a saying that you know, people without the knowledge of their history is like a tree without roots. We were those people back up in the woods. That's where we were. The people of Pinpoint originated right here on the three islands. Skidaway, Green Island, and Ossabaugh Island. So this is it, huh? Ossabaugh. It's a long way from where I've been. Finally, here I am. Long way in from which color people have come, this road pretty much symbolizes that distance. People were impotent here. They, you know, they just didn't come here. They, they were brought here. They didn't come in a wave of immigration. They were brought over in that very active part of slave trade. When I was very young, my grandfather would talk about the slavery, and he talked about the exodus. Possible pinpoint. A lot of history. My history. Purchasing land was one of the aspirations of the new freed people. Folks thought that land meant freedom. You know how the word get around. Land is for sale, land is for sale. And back in them days, it was cheap. So my grandfather and all them old boys came over here and they checked out Pinpoint. So they bought up much of the land as they could. And it was crabbing, it was orchardering, it was fishing, and they were completely self-sustaining. Independence was what they were all about. They paid for our freedom, for our liberty, to be able to, to live on some you know, waterfront property. They lived through not only the Revolutionary War, but also the uh, Civil War. They lived through our world wars. How much more American can you be? How much more of a claim can you have to whatever this country stands for, good and bad? Set him out here. It was nothing but woods and a dead end road. I don't know how my grandfather found this place, but. It was a godsend for our family as well as Pinpoint. Yeah, old man Vamos, he was a good man. Like I said, he was, he was our savior, man. You ever heard about the Great White Hope? That was him. That was him, man. I don't care what nobody said. This is the former home of A.S. Farn and Son Incorporated, Crab and Oyster Processing Plant. This place, this crab factory and this oyster factory, it kept food on everybody's table. Yeah, if that factory could talk, it would say a lot. <laughs> you got some, some brilliant minds come out of this factory. 
all on account of old man Walt. You know, they all survived off of the factory. The factory was the source of income for most of Penfall. Some people worked here their entire lives and never even had another job. My grandfather had these printed, oh, this is probably from the late 50s or the early 60s. And it's uh, three, three Varns Pinpoint brand double crabs. And my grandfather was thinking about me being a part of this business and it made me feel so good. I mean, it, made, it just touched my heart when I saw him. People can see that it was a lot of hard work here. A lot of hard work. Well, we had to do something that should make a living, you know? And that was our living, picking the crafts. Everybody worked hard, especially the women. I mean, there were a lot of good men, don't get me wrong, but the women took care of the families. Pinpoint women's were tough, and still is. <laughs> Ain't nothing need to be done. Pinpoint women don't call on men's. Pinpoint women's get there and do it, because we strong. Well, I started when I was nine years old, working in a factory, go to school, and when I get off from come out of school, I had to go change clothes and head down to the factory, pick crab. It would be cold, and you could see the women coming back out of the factory, man, um, with, with, with bundles of, of, of clothing in. Keep that wind from giving them pneumonia and stuff like that. When the wind was blowing through the stoves, the air would come up right in your face. It was cold. Especially in the back where I used to work at, because that's where they used to store the ice. Mm -hmm. The end of your fingers? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. The end of your fingers used to be so cold. cold. Oh, that it was just life. Mm -hmm. That was just life. Like everything we had, we was appreciative for what God had blessed us with. Oh, I want to let you know you couldn't find a place like Pinpoint because we were all depending on Jesus. Oh, yeah, we cussed and we fussed and we called each other all kind of names. But when it all boiled down and when trouble came, we all knew how to come together and learn how to pin. Sometime when I come around the curve and I look down the road, I say, Lord, thank you for Pinpoint. I just love Pinpoint. It's a little close-knit community where everybody looks out for everybody. That's where it all started at. My grandfather, Louis Green, he's the founder of Learn Me How to Knit Crab and Shrimp Net. This community represents a deep sense of family, hard work, a very deep belief in God of faith. It's just a bond. I, I believe it's stronger than a lot of marriages that we have here. Thank you, my Heavenly Father, that everything was well in the community. Yes. Thank you for the brothers Thank and the you, sisters man. of this community. Yes. The people caring about one another caring about one another and feeding one another, clothing one another. I knit crab net on this porch. It was selling for 25 cents a piece. That net helped me through school, and I thanks the Lord for it. It, it was love. But you know, sometimes love comes without, without you knowing it. And these people, when you look at them, worn by time, the hands, the face, the skin, and yet, those same women would work their way into their undergarments and give you a crumpled dollar. Boy, get your education. They're just good, hard-working, God-fearing, God-loving people. When I come down here, it reminds me of the old times, you know? Make you stop and think. I mean, I love this place. I really do. Yeah.
there's a bell that they would ring. This bell is still here. They don't ring it often, but it's still here that they would ring the bell and they would walk to church singing. You know, after a long day's work, not much pay, but they still were grateful to God for the life that he lived. Anyone tell you the name of that church on Osaba? They hinder me not. That was the name of the church over there. It's the sweet feel of Eden now. That's a descendant church, but it was the hinder me not. Hinder me not Baptist Church. That name says so much about the culture and the people, and it tells you what the uh, work regime was like. Yeah, how do you build a tabby hut? oyster shells and mud. In that heat, from West Africa, you're in a new culture. Isn't that unbelievable? It hinder me not. I drive the, the pinpoint every Sunday. I ease out that back door and I take the interstate and go to church. I can't wait to get there tomorrow morning. We have a good time. So what was that song? I'm running for my life. Is that the one? Anybody ask you who I am? <laughs> I'm for my life. I'm for my life. You know, um, if you want to visit the dead, you go in the cemetery but you want to go to church to have service. Come to Sweetfield. There's no pinpoint without religion. Church was so special. You would go in hearing one thing, and you would come out feeling different. You didn't leave the way you came, you know? It was, it was church. Old Man Ball was a funny man. He was a good man, but he was funny. He was a big old guy, and he wobbled when he walked. He, he used to talk kind of, shake his head when he talked. Couldn't bring his bumble back and see it back and forth until he could get his words out. I remember him, he used to stutter. Y'all boys want to go to the baseball game tonight? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. And he would take us to the game and we would have a good time, man. He, 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 he said, I, I, I like them damn Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, sponsored the Pinpoint Rams for many years until he died. Old man Vaughn had pulled uh, he pulled his soul into the Rams. Then he bought us awesome uniform, bats, ball, glove. We had the whole outfit. Yeah, I had a nice big outfit too. That Pinpoint Rams, man. They bad at boom, man. It was bad. Some of some bad boys. We played down here. We was hard to beat down here. In the, we stole this the kitchen. I never forget this place as long as I live. This this place here have brought joy to my life and joy to this community. And we looked it good. We looked it good. We looked like the Oakland is. And we was we was a force to be recognized. Oh, you know this is be my game. But he done learned how to throw a cast net. He done learned how to hit a half robber. Yeah, look at all day. Well, we could find out if he still got it. He ain't got it no more. He don't like me. Joe's is coming. I remember I had a 55 Chevrolet. And I took that thing right up there by the hole up there. I would go round and round that tree 
all day long. Every time I feel like going, doing something, I go get in that car and go around and around that tree. <laughs> just having, just having fun, G give, giving them something to laugh at. <laughs> yeah, they used to love to see me go around that tree. Yeah. Uh oh, what you gonna run? We play half robber from sun up to sundown. We buy a whole ball and we cut it. You take a razor blade and just cut it, that's your half robber. <laughs> These are the things that we had to make because there was no money to buy them. We had to make do with what we had. You didn't have TV, that's the least of it. You didn't have water, you didn't have electricity. You want to stand still? Did he? The man didn't shoot me and kill me now. <laughs> well, you've been playing with it too long. Since there was no air conditioning, you were never in the house during the day. So you were always running around barefooted with no shirt on. Our fun came from creativity. We had grass dolls because we couldn't afford to have dolls that were bought out of a store. We'd pull the grass up, shake the root off, wash the hair, and put grease in it, hair grease in it, and that was our doll. It was an experience that has taught me to appreciate the smaller things in life instead of the finer things in life. <laughs> Oh, come on, hit the ball, dog. When it's not hit, it's time to stop. Well, I couldn't hit when you was younger either. <laughs> yeah, I better go over there and get that stick and show them how to hit it. <laughs> There's a lot you didn't have, but you had each other, and you had the language. If you engage in a conversation with <laughs> some of the local people, it's hard to understand. Well, now, let me just see that. I forgot to tell you, child, there's another thing coming, and you're going to be surprised when you see him. When I was growing up, we'd, we'd go to the mainland, and the first thing people would say to me was, you must be a rice-eating Gigi. I used to sit there for a long time, and I said, what in the world are they talking about? My Gullah people always had nicknames. You might have Gullah terms like Fuss One. That would be the nickname for a person who was the first born in the family. I love my nickname, and I'll answer to it. My nickname is Peaches. They call me Wasp. My brother's name was Peanut. Old Manny Boy, old Hemo, better known as Manny Boy. You had to actually concentrate to listen to understand what they were saying. Dog got four foot but can't walk but one road. I'd have been there, and you know you ain't for come there, not yet. Words like buckra for white man and cooter for turtle. Because everybody asks me about it. Where you get that nickname? I can't tell you. This is a long story. I don't want y'all to know. What's your nickname? <laughs> the nickname is Ned. And what was that other one? Dookie Dookie. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> if you was out in the street and you say Boney Dick, I will answer. All booms. All that would just hang. <laughs> Don't tell nobody. My nickname was Pete, and mine was Boy. They called me Boss Turkey. And they used to call me Captain Oyster in school. It used to piss me off real bad. I'm serious. Most a man, meaning you're short in stature. You're not a tall person. You're most a man, almost a man. <laughs> Everybody in the community called me Nerve. He would get on people's last nerve. So he was called Nerve. <laughs> Talking about um, Henry Taylor, some of the people in the community would call him a tough mouth Geechee, meaning that his accent was hard and strong. And he would always see me, you know, when I was a kid playing, and he'd always run toward me. He'd say, hey, you little Risa one. Boy, I'm going to cut your sandwich. And he meant that he was going to give me a whipping on my backside because, you know, your backside it was like a sandwich, you know? So you're gonna cut your sandwich. That's one thing that old people did not tolerate. A no man is child. You were spoken to one time, and if you were to dare to talk back or ask a question, that was just the 
that was um, punishment time. My mother was a disciplinarian. You seen the movie Cool Hand Luke? She would get your heart right for you. Discipline was a big thing in Pinpoint. They'd look at you, Maria, you know, like, give you the evil eye. Well, I'm gonna tell Mike on you, because he sure don't raise you like this. <laughs> and that's not gonna work. <laughs> I brought you in, I'll take you out. <laughs> that's what they used to tell us. By the time you get home, they were, they were sitting there with that belt. Her name was Matilda Sams. If you walk by and then say good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, that was... <laughs> What's wrong with that no manners child? Boy, didn't you see me sitting here? No, ma'am, I didn't. What you was... Oh, oh, talking back to me? By the time I got from her to here, Mama would be waiting on me. You can look for a good behind cut, a good one. I thought she enjoyed hearing me get my butt whipped. And you didn't do that again. You didn't make that mistake twice. No matter where I was going, I would always look on that porch to see if she was there. I guess she hadn't heard me getting a whipping in a while, so she decided she was gonna do it herself. I can reach back in, get these shoes off so quick. You can run, he will run you down. Slap him with my shoes. And like I said, she was a great big woman. Bent me over, put my head between her legs, and this fat just sealed up. And I couldn't think of any other way of getting out. It really reached us with manners. Having respect for your elders. So I bit her. <laughs> <laughs> I had never seen her get up out of that chair. She got up that day. <laughs> You put it half a gallon of vinegar to each pot. With half, with a half a bag of salt. And that's how they cooked it. So, best crab in the world came out of Pinport. Not New Orleans, out of Pinport. <laughs> You can never starve the people on Pinpoint because there's always a the river. <laughs> it's something about that river make that food taste so good. You can catch shrimp, you can have crabs, you know, fish. What more can you ask for? Everything was good to me. Shrimp and rice, mm -hmm. oyster, oyster, and rice. oyster and rice. Butter beans and rice. Fried crab and rice. You want some good old butter beans with some smoked neck bone? You've got to preserve shrimp and grits. Nobody in Pinpoint never went hungry. Crab and rice. Crab and rice. <laughs> Okra gumbo. Devil crab, mm. fried crab, stew crab. Pinpoint devil crab is different from any devil crab in the world. Mm. Fried fish. Pigs feed. Coon, rabbit, possum. Stew, stew fish. fish. <laughs> it is good. Back in those days, when we had that tucker running, we could place the tucker. You could head, you could head, had a certain sound to it. And all you had to do was just look. Look beyond where you see those docks at. And you'll see, you can see that, that light. You see it drifting, coming this side. That river touch a lot of lives, man. Touch a lot of lives. We call it Marsh, it means I'm home. That was my life. 
from the time I was 10, I was out in that river every chance I got. Most of what I know came from God's creation. It's all beautiful out there. This is a wonderful place where people worked, people failed, people dreamt. There's been some good deeds down here. Good deeds. Some I will never forget. just a wonderful and peaceful way to grow up. It makes me feel closer to my creator. I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. When the crab factory died, the people died. So you can't stay there. What are you gonna do? I hope they don't leave pinpoint. This is a frontier and it's slipping away. It is the only black-owned property on the coast of Georgia. The rest of it has been bought up for development. White gone gone, Hilton Head is gone, the Fuscalina is gone. We are the last on the southeast coast that waterfront property. We're losing land where families lived. Having the land become a commodity and we trade it for what we, what we think is wealth. And there's, there's one last chance to recover the life and culture of African Americans. This is it. We have a history that's just unbelievable. And I pray that everyone really understand that and stay here, you know, until their dying day. I'm now back where I started. And we want to try to preserve it and keep it the way it was so we can pass that along to the younger people. I just hope, I just hope it'll always be here. No place I can go and come to. Yeah. I would pray that the Lord will work a miracle and turn pinpoint around for the goodness of all the grands to come, for all the grands to come, it's going to take a miracle from God to do that. This was a wonderful community and still is. I think it's going to stay that way. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> At least till I leave here. Yeah. You know, but I ain't going nowhere. That's where I'll be at till when the good Lord carry me away. Let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus lead you all the way. You know, you think about it. If you make a quilt, for example, it has all these little pieces that you sew together. And yet you never talk about it as pieces of fabric. It's a quilt. It's the whole made up of interesting parts. That's what makes it a wonderful quilt. And I think that's the same thing about the fabric of our country. The flag's tattered but it's still blowing. It's, it's worn and it's weathered and it's imperfect, but it's still blowing. These are different people with a different attitude who did it because that was what life required. So yes, yeah, slavery and discrimination and segregation tatters that American experience, but it's still our experience. All of it. to heaven let Jesus lead you all the way
But it all goes back to what you believe in. Which, which makes who you are. Ultimately. Don't you think? Take me to the water. There is an old song that we sang as Gullah people. And it was, take me to the water. Take me to the water. And once you reach the water, you would have reached the pinnacle of life. Nickname is Pete, and had a beautiful life in Pinpoint. Won't change it for nothing in the world. 